Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. And uh, now we know whom we are teaching and, and uh, conversing with. Thank you, thank you very much. I want also to introduce one of us, Ifrin Obaga. Ifrin Obaga is one of us and she is here. And we work together in Nairobi campus and we have also seconded her to postgraduate uh, programs where she is actually directly involved with Tanitin and project and thesis. So Ifrin, you are here. I guess you are here, Ifrin. Yes, I can um, hear Mr. Kungu. You can hear me from your end. Oh, it, the screen is showing Pamela. That's why I was looking for Evelyn. Oh, Perfect. sorry. I, <laughs> I may need to... I'm yeah, sorry for missing out on Evelyn. I'm so, really sorry. Yeah. Don't worry, Dr. Tali. Don't worry, don't worry. Now, I want to invite Evelyn so that yes. she can pray for us. And then she can start us off. Karib sana, Evelyn. And Asante before Evelyn comes... Sorry, 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 sorry. Before Evelyn comes in, Today, yes. we will be able to handle three main areas. One, we will be able to handle the area of how to access the library resources. And Ifrin will be there to talk to us about the print resources that are available in our library for those who might be interested, come to the library. She will also be able to talk to us how to access the online library resources. What credentials do we need to get there? That is the door. How will you lock the door and get into the library and access the resources? And then we we will also, I'll be coming in to take you further on how to navigate the databases that are there for electronic resources in terms of ebooks and e-journals. And then we have Grace coming in after that to talk to us about our institutional repository. You would need to access the past examination papers, research output in terms of thesis and dissertations that are done in the university by the faculty and the students. And so, um, Madam Grace will be coming in to talk to us about that part. And then we will have a session for question and answers, which Grace will be leading us to answer any question that you have. Then next Friday, God willing, we will be able to handle the APA in in, depth, in, a, in an in-depth way. And then we'll be able to see that Zotero, the app that helps us to do with um, APA, or rather the citation, the in-text and the reference list. So we will have Zotero. And then we'll be able to deal with um, how to deal with plagiarism. So you're most welcome if you kindly pray for us and then you can continue. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. You know, uh, yeah, I had just to confirm that I am audible enough. So um, my name is Ifri Nubaga. I'm a staff in Nairobi Campus Library, and uh, I'm also in charge of the school library. But uh, most importantly, um, I support postgraduate students, uh, mostly through uh, their research work. Uh, when it comes to writing your thesis, uh, we will walk the journey together. So uh, before I pray, there's a, a small verse I would like us to share. That is uh, Proverbs chapter 25 uh, from verse 5. Just one verse which says, wisdom brings strength and knowledge gives power. Battles are won by listening to advice and making a lot of plans. So um, today as the library department, we are here to give you knowledge, uh, knowledge regarding how to access resources, uh, knowledge about where to go for particular information, knowledge about how to evaluate which sources to use in your assignment, and most importantly, knowledge of what we have that is available that you can make use of in the library. And like the way that scripture says, uh, knowledge gives power. So today through uh, our session, we hope we're going to empower you will give you uh, knowledge that will make you powerful in terms of being able to search and retrieve relevant literature that will be very helpful to you as you start writing your assignments and some papers. So let's pray that God will give us an understanding of what we're going to cover in today's class. Let's pray together. Uh, mighty and everlasting Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we come before the throne of mercy this evening. Lord, we want to honor your name. We want to glorify you, Jehovah. And I thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that you have created, that, Lord, we may rejoice and we may be glad in it, Jehovah. We don't take it for granted, O oh Lord. 
And thank you, Father, even for gathering us together this evening with our students as a library department, oh Lord. Thank you, Father, even for uh, the session we have ahead of us, Lord, uh, the training session, oh Jehovah, Lord. And Father, we are praying that, Lord, you're going to enable our students, my Father, even to benefit very much, Lord, from our presentation, so Lord. And Father, may you open uh, their ears, may you give them wisdom, my Father, through this session, Lord, that they're going to learn as much as possible and be able to use it even in their day-to-day -day activities as a student, oh Lord. And even for those of us who are presenting, my Father, I pray that, Lord, you give us wisdom, my Father, even to know uh, how to be able to uh, express whatever it is you want to present, Lord, in a way that is going to be helpful to our students. Be with us, Lord, in this session and guide us through the whole session. And when you come to an end of it, my Father, remind us to give you glory and to honor you. In Christ's name we do believe and pray. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you. Oh, okay. Uh, so um, basically, um, like Bishop had said, or Mr. Kumu had said, um, there are two things I'm going to do. Uh, one is to expose you to our print resources and also just give you an overview of how we can access our electronic resources. So Lista has two kinds of resources in the library. We have the print resources and then you have the electronic resources. So the print resources are what you'll find available within our libraries displayed on the library shelves. And then you have the electronic resources which are accessible electronically um, as long as we have internet connection. And that is what Mr. Kung will come and talk about later. That is the databases that you can access uh, as a student. Now, um, I'll start with the print library. So if you want to access our resources, uh, just allow me to share my screen so that we can be able to move together. Uh, Mr. Kungu, you are the host. Kindly allow me to share my screen. Uh, as we wait for him to give me the rights to share my screen, uh, this has uh, two main libraries. There's a library in Nairobi campus and there's a library in the River campus. And as a data student, you're allowed to use any of these libraries as long as you, uh, the library is open and you have your student ID that is able to enable us to identify you as our student. Now, if you're going to come to Nairobi campus library for your personal studies, you need to know the opening hours. Uh, in Nairobi campus from Monday to Fridays, we open from 8.30 a.m. up to 9.00 up to 9 p.m., sorry. And then uh, on Tuesday and Thursdays, I know Tuesday we close from 11.15 to 12.15 for chapel. And then Thursday we close from 11.15 to 12.15 for Bible study. And then Saturdays we open from 8.30 up to 5 p.m. And then Sundays and public holidays we are closed. If by any chance you find yourself around at the river and you'd like to use at the river campus library, it's also good to know what hours they open. So for the river campus library from Monday to Friday, they open from 6 a.m. up to 10 p.m. And then they have the chapels on Tuesday from uh, 9 to 10, Bible study on Thursdays from 9 to 10. And then Saturdays they open from 8.30 to 5 p.m. And just like Nairobi, on Sundays and public holidays, we also uh, remain closed. Mr. Kungu, I'm still waiting for the rights to share my screen. I think I have given you, you have the a... right. Okay, Every now, yeah. Now, you see? Uh, it's, yes. it's okay. Yes, it's okay. 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 So um, I'll start with, I'll start as well on understanding how to be able to access the, the print that we have in the library. Now, what the library has done is it has a library catalog and a library catalog is basically a listing of all the resources that are available within the library. And a library catalog enables you to have an opportunity to be able to search through the collection and see what the library has either by a particular author or on a particular subject or by, on, I mean, by a particular title. So what happens is that when the semester begins and your classes start off, you're always given course outlines. And these course outlines will always uh, detail what resources you're supposed to use for that particular unit, either the core text or the reference text. So these texts, you may find them in the library, some of them, but others you may find them online. Now, if you want to uh, check what we is in your, in your course outline, whether it is uh, physically available in the library or not, then you have to make use of the library catalog. And this catalog can be accessed anywhere as long as you have internet. You're not limited to being within data for you to search through our collection. And uh, the good thing about our catalog is that when you carry out a search, 
it's able to uh, bring you results from both our libraries so that you're able to see which of the titles are in Atriva, which of those titles are in Nairobi, and then you're able to make your decision accordingly depending on where you are uh, located at that particular time. So let's go ahead now and share uh, and just uh, look at what we have. Okay, so this is the Daystar, the Daystar page. I know most of us are familiar with this page. So when you are on this page, you get to academics and then you go to uh, library. You can see this, the library catalog right here. So just click on the library catalog. Okay. So once you click on the library catalog, um, I always tell students that a library catalog is like a main door, like now for our catalog is like a main door that will now lead you into other small rooms that we have within our library or other sections we have in our library where you can get information. So when you're in this library catalog, you can be able to access our repository, which Grace will talk about later. You're able to access our e-resources, which uh, Mr. Kung will also talk about later. And most importantly, you're able to search through our physical library and see what is available that you can borrow. Now, if you are to get a book out of any library, there are three things you can use to search for the book. You can either search for the book using the title, that is if you know the title, or you could search using the subject if you know the subject, or you could still search for the book using the author if you know the author. So this uh, catalog allows you to do two kinds of searches. There's the basic search and then there's the advanced search. So basic search is what you can see right here. So when you click on this drop down menu here, you can see this library, this author, this subject. So that means if I know the title, I'll pick on the title, I put the title here, and then I'll go ahead and search. If I know the author, I'll pick on author, I put the author's name here, and then go ahead and carry out the search from this point. If I know the subject, I will say I know the subject, I'll put the subject here, and then I'll go ahead and carry out my search. So for instance, I know um, majority of us here are dealing with education. So probably I want to look for a book on a particular subject. Uh, could someone volunteer a subject we can try look for from our catalog? Someone to Psycholo volunteer a subject? Psychology. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, psychology is too broad though. I know you're going to get thousands of books, eh? So probably I say I want books on the subject psychology and then I go ahead and carry out my search. So once I do that, it means I'll get all books that are on psychology, regardless of whether they are in a Thiriva campus library or in a Ruby campus library. And to make it even more interesting, we've tried as much as possible to accommodate some titles from our electronic database also. So when you carry out your search, it's also able to give you results from what we have within our electronic databases. So like you can see, uh, you're able to distinguish a print book from an electronic book by looking at how accessible it is. Like now this one is online access. It means it is an online book. So if you only want to limit to the print books in the library, then all you have to do is you come and pick on general collection items. So you filter to that. So once you filter to that, then you'll be able to see the books that are in print format that are available within the library. And also, you can filter by the holding libraries. Where are you at that particular time? Do you want a book that is in Nairobi Campus Library or in a Thiriva Campus Library? For instance, I'm currently in Nairobi Campus Library, and I only want to see books that are available in this campus. So I will pick Nairobi Campus Library. Okay. So once I do that, then you can see uh, I now have 913 titles. Now, these 913 results means there are 913 nine titles that have the word psychology or are on the subject psychology. And you realize that the term that you have used to search is highlighted in yellow. Like now you see this is highlighted in yellow. Uh, this is highlighted in yellow, highlighted in yellow, and so on and so forth. That is basically how you carry out a subject search. We can also try carrying out an author search. Does someone know an author we can try look for, maybe from our collection? Any oh, author? Sorry? Bada. Max Eugene, Max Eugene. Eugene Bada. Give me the spelling of Bada. It's B-A. B-A-R. Whoever was giving me the name, the spelling you. kindly. You. You. It's B-U. Okay, B-U. 
sorry, sorry. It's B U. R. R. No, it is B A. B A. <laughs> yeah. B -A. I know. I know. Somebody, somebody has put the spelling on the chat, right? Is that yeah. the, is that the word? Okay. Let me yes. just use the spelling. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Uh, so once I do that, um, let me see. You can see there's a, a book, but it's an online book. Eh? It is on uh, surviving freedom. There's getting agencies to work together, still by the same author, but it's also an electronic book. If you ever see a book indicated as online access, it simply means it is an electronic book. There's also this one, which is also an electronic book. Uh, but then there's this one, a practical guide for policy analysis, path for more e effective problem solving. Now, this is a print book. How do you tell a print book from an e-book? A print book will always have availability indicating three things. One, the campus where the book is found. Like now, this book is found in Nairobi Campus Library. Two, it tells you how many copies are available that you can borrow and how many copies have been checked out. Like now, for this particular book, three copies are available for loan. So copies available for loan are indicated in green in brackets. And then copies that have been checked out are indicated in red in brackets. Why is it good for you to get information about how many copies are available for loan or not? The book could be available in the library, yes, but all the copies are checked out. So you don't have to waste your time coming all the way only to be told that copies for that title have all been checked out. So you can still check before you come. And if you if establish that the book you want is within your campus and there are copies that are available, Ooh. then you can always come and borrow that particular Six, book. Six, so two, once two, you establish... One, 300. There's somebody, there's somebody who needs yeah. to mute Mr. kindly. 288. Mr. Kongo. 288. Yes. Yes. Somebody saying something. Sorry. So um, for print books, you need to check the campus where the book is found, number one. To establish if there are copies that are available for loan, number two. But most importantly, also, you need to get the call number, this one. So the call number is um, a shelf address that tells a reader where a book is located on the library. It's like when you tell your friend, uh, I live in this estate, on this street, this house number. If they follow those instructions clearly, then they're going to find you. The same happens to our books. The books are given class numbers. And this class number is the same number that is normally put on the library catalog as well as on the spines of the book. So what happens is when you go to the catalog and you search for the book and you get this call number. So that means this number is the number that is put on the spine of that particular book on the shelf. So what you need to do, like in the case we have H97.B37, you need to go to the shelf, find the shelf that has uh, class number H, look for number 97, and then dot B37. Now, the way books are arranged in the library, it's based on their subject area or the subject coverage. So that means the books that are on the same subject area will be found together on the library shelf. So the library uses a scheme called the Library of Congress that arranges knowledge based on the alphabet from letter A up to letter Z. So if most of us like are doing psychology, you'll find most of your books being in class BF. For books on education, you'll find most of them in class L, LB, or LA. You'll find your books there. So you find that these classes have different subject areas, and we've tried as much as possible to make sure that we have labeled our shelves properly so that when you want to get a book, you can easily locate the class and be able to get the book from there. So that is an example we have done on searching using the author. So let's do a last search probably using a title. And I hope this is the book you wanted to ask if we have. Is it the one? Is it this one? It is yeah. the one. It is the one. Okay. Okay. At least now you know there are three copies that are available and you are free to come and borrow tomorrow if you get time. Uh, lastly, let's try a search using the title. What title can we try look for? Do you have any title that is in your course outline you'd like us to check? The Art of Institutional Leadership. Okay. The Art of Institutional Leadership. 
So you could still do that. You type in, as long as you have picked the title here, you type the title in the space provided and then you search. So let's see if the book is available either in our e-library uh, or within the print library. No, that one, I don't think we have it within our, our print library. Um, there's something closer to that, but it's not the exact title. Is there any other we can try, maybe? Biblical Foundations for Leadership. Biblical Foundations mm -hmm. for Leadership. Yeah. Okay. That is a course title. Oh, that's a course title. No, I needed the, the title of the we book. Still, we can still get Bi a book on Biblical Foundations. Eh? Yeah. Okay, let's, mm -hmm. let's search and see. Okay. I think uh, there's one uh, biblical foundation for missions, biblical foundations for small group ministry, for a Christian home, for missions, you know. Okay, you can see what we have. Okay. So this is basically what we have on uh, that has that word in the title. But I know under that unit you'll be given the specific books that you need to use. Eh? But the bottom line that you need to understand is that you can do a basic search either by keying in the title, the author, or the subject, no, and then you scroll, enter the no, search one, term one here. Um, yes? Just, just scroll down. There's one I've seen something on leadership. Oh, where, 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 where? Yeah, where? that's leadership in Christian perspective. Christian perspective. Yeah. yeah, this that one. That can eh? be a good one. Yeah, that can, that can be, a be a good one. one. Yes, and like I told you, look out for three things. One, which campus is the book found? This is Nairobi. Are there copies available for loan? Yes, three copies are available. What is the call number? This is the call number. So when you come to the library, this is the number that you just need to come with and then go to the shelf with the letter BV and look for that number there and you're good to go. So are we okay searching using the basic search function? Sorry, come so again. what do you say about uh, not available in transit? Uh, which one not available? Like which one? This one. The, the same, same uh, book here. The same book. It may you know sometimes. Eh, um, every librarian in the library has uh, their campus where they work from. For instance, personally, my account is for Nairobi Campus Library. If, for instance, I go to a river and I attend to a student, and probably I check in a book. That that book will be noted as has been checked in from a river. Yet ideally, it's not it's not checked in in a river. So it's like showing the book is being moved from this campus to another campus. So this thing will be like, I have, I'm, I'm supposed to be in Nairobi, but I'm taking in a book in Atriva. So it will pick that book to be on transit from Nairobi to Atriva. So on transit mostly happens if a book is checked in uh, by a staff, let's say from a different campus, when they go to another campus. But in such instances, uh, the book might be on the shelf or we can help you to get the book if it is in another campus. The goodness is we work together as a team in the library. So if there's a book that you need and the book is in Atiriva, if you let us know, we are able to organize to have the book brought to Nairobi for you to borrow and vice versa. Okay. Can you go to advanced search now? Yeah, that's okay. okay. That's so okay. Okay, thank you. So we can try advanced search. Now in basic search, we are only searching using one aspect, either the title alone, the author alone, or the subject alone. But now in advanced search, it is more specific in terms of you can combine one subject and another. You can combine a title and a, to an author, or you can combine an author and another author in a case where two authors have written a book. So for instance, I know of a particular subject Probably I want a subject like education, for example, and then I want it to be with another subject, let's say a uh, policy. Okay, so in this case, it means I want a book that has both subjects together. And you can see my default connector here is and, but you can connect using and or not. So we could say we do education and then with uh, policy. So if I say I want education and policy, I will get all the books that have these two subjects in one publication. If I say education or policy, it means I want either of these subjects or books that are on either of these subjects to be retrieved. If I say education, not policy, it means I only want books on education 
and nothing about policy. So for now, let's uh, use and so we get books that have both subjects in one a publication. So I'll go ahead and carry out my search. So once I do that, then I will get books from all our campuses that are on, on education policy. And I think you can see that. Yeah. And like I told you, you can see we have print resources, like where it's indicated, the campus and so on. And then you also have the electronic resources that says click here to read the book online. That is an example of how you can use two subjects to carry out an advanced search. Another option is where I know a title and I know an author. For example, I want a book on research, for example, and uh, sorry, I want it to have been authored by Mugenda, for example. So it means I'm combining the title and the author. So when I search, I will get all the books we have on research by Mugenda from all our campuses. Okay. So let's see what we have. We have eight results. And you can see it indicates the campus, the copies available, and the call number. So you can see all that displayed there. Then uh, lastly, we said uh, for the advanced search, you can decide you want to combine an author and another author. Where you find two authors have written a book. Like which one do you know has two authors you can try search for? Any that has two authors? Any book that has two authors that you can try search for? Okay. So um for instance, oh, I, the I want that you sorry about for research. Like Mugenda. Yeah. Okay. I know there's a book by Mugenda and Mugenda where a couple uh wrote the book on research. So in this case, then it means we want to get books that have been authored by both authors. So once we do that, uh, let's see what you're going to end up with. So you can see Mugenda, Mugenda, you know, all that. Mugenda, 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 and all that, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, basically, that is how you search for information from the library and how you get to tell where the book is located, uh, are there copies available, and what is the call number or the shelf address for the book. So I think basically that is how you carry out your search. But then most importantly, I should have pointed that out also. Uh, our library books are in two categories. We have books that are found in the library, which are referred to as library books. And then you have the textbook loan books, which are books that are found in the textbook loan section. Now, text textbook loan books are given to you for a whole semester because they are core texts that you require throughout the semester. Then you have library books that are given to you for a period of two weeks. Now, when you look at the, uh, the results you get on your catalog, how do you distinguish whether this book is found in textbook loan or it's found in the library? You look at a prefix that comes just before the call number. You look at this one, for example, there's TBL before that number. So TBL comes before H62. TBL stands for textbook loan. So this means if you are to get this book, you'll go to the textbook loan section and ask for it. Um, this other one also does not have a TBL, which means it is a library book. If we look at this one, it doesn't have TBL before the number, it is a library book. But then look at this one. There's TBL before the number. It means it is a book that is found in textbook loan collection. So you go to textbook loan section and then you're able to get the books for a whole semester. Okay, so I think... Uh, that is all about searching for print books in the library. Unless you have a burning question, uh, I show you one last aspect about logging into your catalog. Uh, just when your hand is up, kindly ask your question. Okay, thank you. Yes. I think uh, by, by default last, uh, last, last semester, yes, I happened to borrow a book, but I don't know whether I returned it because I opened the book mm. and I was unable to retrieve it after after a day. So I don't know whether I returned the book or it returned it then. Were, were you able to borrow the book? Yeah, I borrowed. I think I borrowed the book. So yes. I don't know. I You're tried sure. to look for it after, afterwards. Mm -hmm. The following day, mm. I was unable to trace the book. In the as in you you went with the book home or you used within the library. 
I think I borrowed. You went with it home. Yeah. Uh, I think what you can do, um, for such cases, you may need to write an email to library at the easter.ac.ke. Just detail your student number and your name and tell us what the issue is. Then once we get into your account, we'll be able to establish what is the issue and we'll get back to you. That's in order, Josephine. It's okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any other question or we can look at logging into the library account? Okay. Um. So for the books we have in the library that are in print format, for your level of studies, you are allowed to borrow up to 11 books for two weeks. So that means as a student, whether you borrow the books from textbook loan section or you borrow them from the library, at the end of the day, you're only allowed to have only 11 books at any given time. Now, library books are given to you for a period of two weeks, but we allow you to renew two more times. So that will mean uh, at the end of it all, you can have a book for a cumulative period of six weeks. And then you don't have to come to the library for you to have your books renewed. You can do it on your own. So how do you access your account in order to be able to renew your books? You need to have your login password. Now your login password, your login and password are the same, your admission number. For instance, if my student's admission number is 17, 1387, I'll still get the same number. This also becomes my password and then I log in. So once you log into your account, there are a whole lot of activities that you're able to carry out other than just renewing your books. But I know what most students do is that they use their account to be able to renew the books that they have borrowed from the library. But you need to know that you cannot renew a book if a book is overdue. You're only allowed to renew a book if the book is, is, is still uh, not overdue and there are no fines that have been accrued uh, from that book. Uh, I believe you are told about library fines. If you borrow a book and you're given a debt to return and you go beyond the stated debt, then we charge you five shillings per day. So if you borrow a book and the book has, the, the debts have expired, then it means you may not be able to renew that particular book. In that case, then you'll have to come to the library, pay the fine before you get your, uh, your book renewed. Caroline, your hand is up as you wait for the page to log in. Yes, I wanted to ask you, how do you yes. get to this dialog box that is on the screen? How did you get there? Oh, how, how I got there? You click on yeah. login to your account. Are you seeing where my cursor is? Okay. Yeah, just click on login to your account. You put your admission number as the login and you put your admission number also as the password. It's taking time to... Uh, to log in. So once you're logged in, uh, you can change your credentials. That is the password that you want to use to access uh, your account. You can see if there are any fines that you owe the library. You're able to uh, see how many books you have borrowed currently uh, in, from the library. Uh, you're also able to see your circulation history. What have you borrowed from the library before or what have you read before? from the library. Let me try again. I don't know why it's taking a lot of time. Okay. So um, there are several things that you're able to do once you're logged into your account. Uh, Mr. Otello, your hand is up. You can kindly ask your question as you wait for the account to to be logged into. Okay. I wanted to, I wanted to find out whether this is a genuine uh, student admission number or is it just a Make belief number. So maybe it's the, it's the reason why it's not logging in. It is a what? I was asking whether that's a genuine number or student it, it is, it, yeah, number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. It is a genuine, a genuine, an existent number. Let me oh, just. Uh, uh, it's a, yes, it is an existent number. It's just that um maybe the internet is a bit slow. Yeah, but let me try again. I was in the library late. then the internet was not working, so I had to leave from there to come here. Yeah, yeah the, the internet yes, is a me. bit slow, but uh, let's hope it's going to open soon so that we just get an overview of what one can do once they're logged into their account. Okay. Are you able to send to, to send the link for to that page? Because I'm I'm trying to access to what get access do, uh, to go to library.daystar.ac.ke. I'm there this already. Page, 
you're yeah. ready then click on login to our to your account there's no login to your account it has so much on that page so i'm not able on this page mm. are it you has, on the home page it has home services about us resources and okay. all that let me let me just this is where you are oh already imagine it had already logged me in i just didn't know okay uh, so, yeah. the password the password is it supposed to have the hyphen or it's yes supposed to just the way just the way you write your admission number is the same same way you write it as the password and uh, for any uh, reason you try to log in and you're not able to log in just do the same thing write us an email library at daystar.ac.ak give us your admission number and your name and tell us what your issue is, and then we'll get your issue addressed and then get back to you. So um, this is a, a student's account. The student is called Brian Tuara. So you can see his account. So once you log into your account, this is what you're able to see. Number one, you're able to see what items you have checked out or you have borrowed. Like now this student has borrowed three books from the library. Number two, you can see if there are any fines you owe the library. This student does not owe the library any money. Number three, uh, you can see your personal details. You can see what the library knows about you and you can be able to edit if there are things you want to edit. And then we are able to make the necessary uh, corrections to your account. Okay. Okay. Uh, my internet is, is a very, very slow today. Okay, let me just... Okay. Then are you also able to see your search history? What have you searched before? Like today we have searched for Mugenda, Mugenda, Biblical, Biblical Foundations, Education and Policy and all this. Then you can also look at your checkout history. What have you borrowed from the library before? So this student has borrowed all these books before from the library. You're also able to make purchase suggestions. Let us know if there are books that you'd like us to buy. Just give us the title, the author of the book. And then give us the reason why we need to buy that book and submit your suggestion. There's also messaging. We are able to communicate to you uh, like when a book is about to be overdue, when your book is overdue, if there are any fines and all that, we communicate to you. So you can check these boxes so that you get emails from the library in case of anything uh, happening to your account. I think those are the basic things you can do uh, using your account. So what I need to show you most importantly is how to renew your books. Now, the textbook loan books we said are given to you for a whole semester. You cannot renew a textbook loan book. You can only renew library books. So, you see this is a textbook loan book. It's indicated as not renewable. This is a textbook loan book indicated as not renewable. But look at this. This is a library book. So, you can renew two times. So, for you to renew the book, once you are logged in and you're on your summary and the books are appearing like this, click on renew and then go ahead and renew selected items so you see the date here initially was now it shows the new date is 29th once you renew once you still have another renewal so another time again you'll come in select renew and then again renew selected items so once you do that again now you see we are on 16th month then once that happens then you cannot renew anymore you now have to come to the library the book gets checked in and then checked out to you again so basically, that is all about the library catalog, unless there is a burning question. Are we good? We can go to uh, how to log into the e-library. Okay, I've managed to get to the page. Sorry? I have, I have managed yes. to get to the page. Yes. But now it's showing that you entered an incorrect username or password. I I, I don't think I've ever accessed this library before. So okay, okay. What would I be hear the you. starting point? If if that happens, uh, just write an email to that email Grace has typed on the chat, uh, and just let us know uh, my name is so and so, admission number so and so. I'm not able to log into the catalog. Then you'll be able to reset your password and let you know that your account is okay. We work on it. Okay. okay. Is Thank there you. any other query? Are we good? You can go to logging into the e-library yes. now. Yes. If, if can I just yes. say something? Can I ask? Yes. Yes, question? please. No? Yes, please. Uh, okay. Now, maybe because I'm a bit late because of the problem of the uh, internet, I'm not yes. sure whether you've gone through this process of where you, you can tell, I mean, you, we are uh, 
partner in partnership with some other universities or libraries where we can mm -hmm. borrow books from those those universities or those libraries. They when you when you require a book, they will tell you, uh, okay, this book if 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 it's not in your university library, you have to tell your mm -hmm. university so that you mm -hmm. can get this book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I think Mr. Kongo will uh, is better place to respond to that. But one thing I know is we try as much as possible to cooperate with other libraries to ensure that our clients uh, get access to the resources that they need for their studies. But I think I will uh, give Mr. Kongo an opportunity uh, to respond to that uh, before he goes on to his presentation. Is that okay, Mr. Otelo? You wanted to respond that's, it now or later? That's fine. Uh, Okay, you can respond now, now that you're already on. It's okay, you can go ahead. He's asking uh, about uh, the interlibrary, if we do that. Yeah, we do interlibrary alone, and what we request, if you go to any library nearby and you find a book that we don't have, we you, we can always liaise with the librarian in that university, and then you'll have access to that book through our connections in the library. So we do have that collaboration with the nearby libraries or university. Okay. Mr. Otello, I think now you, you're thank content. You. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Then I think uh, the last thing I want us to look at is now how to get to the e-library or how to log into the e-library. So like I told you that this catalog page is uh, like a main door, but we still have other small rooms that you can get into. So the first room we get into is the e-library where you can be able to access electronic books, electronic journals, electronic pieces, uh, videos, you know, talks and all that. So all you have to do on the library page, just click on off-campus access to digital library. Now, this library is accessible anywhere as long as you have internet. And all you need to do is have a functioning uh, username, I mean, uh, this email, and that is just all you need, basically. So what you have to do is to select your institution. So usually it will appear without the name like that. Eh? So it is blank. So all you have to do is to select your institution. So now I'll be able to type in Desta. So just start typing in and then it will pop up. You pick on it and then say continue. So uh, once you continue, it will then ask you to log in with the Desta SSO. So logging in with Desta SSO simply means that it's going to allow you to sign in using your Desta email and the same password that you use with your Desta email to check uh, your, your student's email, okay? So um, once you've done that, then it will be able to ask you uh, what is your email? I think I'm, let me just log out because I think I had logged in so that we are able to follow the process uh, better. So let me log out. Okay. Okay. So we said pick the university, log in with Data SSO. Okay. Uh, the night will ask you to enter your Data email address okay so once your email is functional i, I just refuse to sign me out because i use this machine a lot so what happens is it will ask you to key in your data email enter your data email and then it will ask for the password that you use with your data email just enter the password that you use with your email and then click login now, once you're logged in, if you're a first, uh, if you're using the, your machine for the first time to access our e-resources, it will ask you to add an extension. Now, this extension is what will enable you to be able to access these resources when you're outside Daystar. But most importantly, it will help you to create collections or on your page and be able to save there the resources that you may need to access uh, probably in the future. And Mr. Kung will demonstrate that to us. Um, when we uh, when he gets to showing us how to navigate these databases. So that is one option through which you can access our e-resources. So we said you can access them through the off-campus access on our, uh, our, our catalog. Alternative number two, you can go to where we went to, to the data page, go to library, and then go to off-campus access. So there are two options. Either you go through the library catalog or you go through uh, the university's website. 
So once you do that, you can still do the same thing. Now, my loft can also be used with your with your tablet, with your phone. Now, for the tablets and the phones, you used to you need to get an app. So go to Play Store. You will get uh, an app called My Loft. Download that app and then just follow the instructions. Select your institution. Um, sign in the data SSO. Enter your email address. Enter your password and then you're good to go. Now, for the mobile, it will not ask you to add an extension, but rather it will ask you to deactivate some VPN uh, settings in order for you to be able to access the resources uh, remotely, uh, even when you're not uh, able to come to school. So basically, that is how you get to log into our e-library. So when you get to the homepage, there's uh, this search pen here where you can carry out a search. When you carry out a search from here, you're able to get results from either Google or Google Scholar. So you choose what you want to use to search. Do you want to use Google or do you want to get Google Scholar? I mean, to use Google Scholar. And the results that you get from this search then will be able to, it will be able to indicate to you out of all these results, which ones have specifically been picked from our electronic resources. Then uh, there's also the e-resources where when you click, now you click on all databases, it allows you now to have a list of all the databases that you have subscribed to. And you see there are quite a number. So that means you have quite a lot of resources that you can be able to access uh, remotely and be able to do better papers and better assignments, even when you're not able to come to the physical library. And then uh, we also have collections where we said you're able to create folders and be able to store documents like journal articles or books in these folders, which you use, um, which you might use at a later date. So you avoid going back to search for content over and over again. So basically my role was just to show you how to log in or how to get into these e-resources. So I'll welcome Mr. Kungu now to come and show us our way around how to navigate through these particular databases and be able to search and get content that is relevant to what you are trying to study. So unless there's a, a burning issue up to that level, I would like to invite Mr. Kungo to take over from there. Uh, thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes, please. Before you leave, I just wanted to ask whether there's a way in which we can bookmark the journals that you have identified. Yes, 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 you can. Yes, you can. What you do, if there's a journal that uh, you like, you can save it as a favorite so that it appears on your favorite. That is for the journals. Eh? And then if there's an article that you like also, you can save it to a collection. So for instance, if I'm doing a unit like education policy, I can come and add a folder here and call it education policy. And then as I carry out my searches, if there's any of the resources that I want to save and use it at a later, or I want to bookmark, I just save it through uh, the extension that we, are, we have added. And then we are able to access it at a later date. Okay. Have I responded to you? Yes, you have. Yeah, but I know Mr. Kung will now show us uh, practically how to go about it on how to create the folders and how to add content to those folders for future reference. So welcome, Mr. Kungu. You can take up from there. Thank you. But also I can see a uh, yellow. You had this up. Maybe oh, before you sorry, leave. sorry. Before I go, you can ask. It's okay. <laughs> No, actually, that's a mistake. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it was a mistake. No problem. No problem. It, it is well. It is well. Thank you very much, Ifrin. Okay. Um, and now I can also share the screen if you are allow me to do so. Yes, Ifrin. Um, yes, yes. I have stopped sharing. Thank you. That, that, that's fine. That's fine. So there we are. Ifrin has given us the door. I mean, the keys to the door now. We are already now inside the library. And now inside the library, we want to navigate the databases that are there and know how to use them to be able to access the resources that we need. So how do we go about this? As Evelyn has talked about the entry through your email address, and you read here where you can do either the search through either Google Scholar or Google itself, but I want us to start with the e-resources here. So once you click on the e-resources, then you go to the all databases, just as if Flynn had told us. We go to all databases, and we were able to see 
all the databases that DESTA has subscribed at the moment. And as you can see, the list is quite huge um, of all the databases. We want to go through maybe one by one briefly and get to know what each database contains. The very first one here, if you are interested in this field of biology, you click on this icon. You can click on this icon. The moment you click on that icon, you get the information about that particular database in terms of the, call, uh, the subject concentration in those databases. Like in this very first one, you will find biology. So if you are studying anything related to biology, that's when you can go ahead and maybe like that particular database if it will be answering questions in the area of your research. We also have another one here called the Directory of Open Access Books. If you click here, it will tell you the kind of books to expect from this particular database. It is an open source ebook database. And what do we mean by the term open source? It means that these books that we have put together, or rather this database has put together, are put together, they are mainly freely available, but peer viewed, quality books, but freely available. So you will find books in agriculture, arts, architecture, etc. So these ones, we don't pay money to access them. They are freely available to everyone. Then we have Directory of Open Access Journal. The same applies to Directory of, uh, uh, of, of uh, Open Access Journals, just the same way we had a Directory of Open Access Books. These books are freely available in the internet, but remember, anything can be posted or anyone can post anything in the internet. But how will you know quality information? We have these uh, databases or other professionals who have come together and are able to say that the world needs to know what has been published and yet because of finances many people are not able to access these resources. So they put them for free at the end of the user. So the publisher is um, publishing these materials from the others. Sometimes the others pay for their work to be published. However, because of that opening where publishers accept uh, to be paid by the others for the work to be published, there has come predatory journals. Journals or other publishers who pose to be good publishers and they accept money and documents and manuscripts from unsuspecting others, especially students when they are told you must publish but they don't know where to publish. And so they publish in those predatory journals. And when they publish in those predatory journals and then they go for the interviews and their journal articles are looked into and they are told your journal cannot be found anywhere within the quality journals. One of the ways to know whether that is a predatory journal, it's not the only way, but one way is to check whether it has been listed within the directory of open access journals. So what this database does to us, it makes it possible to put all together all the journals which are peer reviewed, but are freely available for everyone to access out there. Then we have EBSCO hosts. This EBSCO host has been with us as this university for many years one of the databases that we have used um, in longest. I remember in around 2006, we used to receive CD loans from EBSCO host, and we could reserve a computer for, for our students to navigate through the CD ROMs and access the databases or even journals coming from EBSCO host. But these days, we don't need those CD ROMs. We can simply log in and get to their database. It is one of the richest databases that we we ever used in Daystar. In fact, at one point, it used to be almost the sole database for School of Theology and for, for biological courses. And you will find EBSCO host quite useful, especially as a postgraduate student, whereby you will find thesis and dissertations um, provided through EBSCO host. 
and it's multidisciplinary. And what do we mean by multidisciplinary? It covers various subjects. So you will find subjects in communication, leadership, business, they all find their home within EBSCO. And you'll find even government documents, reports, conference materials. They are very user-friendly also. Then we have the Edinburgh University Press. When you click here, you find that they provide information in these areas. So if you're interested in these areas for the books and the journals, then you can like or rather you can uh, put this, you can put this liking or loving or making it a favorite database to be accessing in future. We have Elga Online. This one again covers the areas of business management and they're good in giving us books uh, related to development studies, those people who are interested in education, economics, finance, etc., and even a bit of research, you will find it in that database. One of our good databases, and we have used very well, is Emirate Insight. We have used Emirate for many years also. It has been with us. In fact, we have been contributors as a university in the competition on how to use these um, resources from Emirat. And at one point, we won a trophy in, in, as um, the best user of Emirat database resources. It's quite rich in the areas of business. If you're looking at management, management in all aspects of management, be it education management, be it in leadership, whatever it is, be it in um, whatever subjects and you are looking at the aspect of management, you will find MRI quite helpful. And so this database will, will be useful to you if you make use of it, and you can navigate and make it one of your uh, favorite databases by coming here and clicking there. Then you can see it is turning to another color to show that I have, I have it as a favorite database. Again, this one we have Yulpin. Um, it's good in respiratory medicine. We reserve that one for people who are doing medicine, or if you have an interest to study something to do with medicine and respiratory issues, you can go there. This one uh, is a collection of multimedia lectures, and it is a book called the HS Talk, and it will be there to enrich your learning in, in the areas of also life science. So, what you find there are multimedia resources, the videos that are helpful to enrich, but if you're interested in that. I'm saying this because I was told also we have doctors on board and maybe you'd like to enrich um, your area of expertise and through these videos that are provided here. Then we have this other database called the IEEE Explore Digital Library. Again, this one, it covers the area of engineering and technology, and it covers in all these areas that you can see here. So you can read uh, by yourself and you know whether you're interested in that. I don't want to forget this one called E1. Um, this one, it spread knowledge about our most valuable resource, that is the water, uh, global health, etc. So if you're interested also in, in learning, uh, more about that particular area, then you will find it helpful. I don't mean to talk about Justa, and I love Justa. It's one of uh, the most user-friendly databases uh, that we have. And Justa, one thing I have, uh, the reason as to why I like Justa, I don't know whether it's because of my bias in humanity, um, it's quite rich. I, I know in the past when we were searching for information from other databases, you could find, um, or rather you could miss that particular database from other, I mean, that particular article or a document from other databases, but you find it in just, it's more of an archive of many other databases. And it's very rich in these areas, humanities, language, linguistic, mathematics, law, library science. It's quite one of the richest databases that we have. But also something that I like about this database is that um, if you're looking for materials which are related to Africa, uh, in the context of Africa, Kenya, you will find this database quite rich in that area. It also has a lot of um, 
uh, free and open access journals and articles which you can see there, find there. Then we have Lexis and Nexis. Lexis and Nexis is good for the school of law. But if you have an interest in understanding law and things to do with law, you get cases, you get registration, you get journals, materials, um, all materials related to the school of law, that is their home. Then we have mathematical science. This one, again, for the people who are doing mathematics and engineering, if you have an interest in that area. OECD. OECD is one of also a very rich databases that if you're interested, especially in the things to do with economics and cooperation, things to do with even um, education in relation, to, in relation to economics, you will find OECD very, very helpful. Then we have another wonderful database here called Open Edition. This one is for books and age journal databases that covers these areas that you can see here related to art and humanities, law, etc. So you can read it through and know whether you are interested in any of those coverage that are given by that particular database. We have Oxford Academic Journal. This one is very good um, in the area of art and humanities, and it will give you the journals. So this one is purely for the journals. Then we have ProQuest. This one is our richest database covering all subjects, but purely for e-books. You will find that most of the books that your lecturers will be referring to um, in electronic format will be coming from ProQuest. I will be coming to demonstrate further on how to use ProQuest, being one of the richest databases in terms of e-books. Then we have public library science, uh, this one good for medicine and science. And then we have uh, SAGE. SAGE has also been with us for a long time and very helpful. It has e-books, I mean e-journals in this coverage, in these areas that are well covered. But we have uh, this particular um, SAGE, a branch of SAGE, but this one is dedicated to research and research methodology. I'll be coming to it because as a postgraduate student, you will find it useful when you are studying the research methods and methodologies and you like maybe to understand further through a video, podcast, um, case studies that will help you to understand research methods and methodology. So this one is very, very key and useful to us as a community scholars. Then we have Springer. What will we get from Springer? From Springer, we will get both books and journals. And also, I remember at one point, we used to buy their books and we have our full access to their books. That's why when Ifrin was demonstrating to us on how to access the books in the library, you could find some going all the way to e-materials or e-books, and you'll find most of them coming from this particular database, Springer. We also have Taylor and Francis. Again, Taylor and Francis have been together with us for a very long time with EBSCO hosts and widest InterScience. So we used even to get their, their CD loans those days, and we could dedicate a computer uh, for students to have access to the materials in soft coming from Terra and Francis. Terra and Francis gives us both ebooks, and also when you come to this other ed, you find it giving us um, the journals. So we have access to uh, their materials. Then we have Royal uh, Society Publishing. Once you click here, you'll find it's good for the people who are dealing with biology. University of Chicago has also been with us for a long time, and um, you can navigate and get to know more about it. Oh, sorry, I clicked to navigate. I didn't want to do it at that point. We'll do it later. Then we have Vital Science. This has come recently to us, but it's a leech database specifically for nurses. Our nursing students, they find their home here. 
in vital signs. Then we have Waire. Waire Intersign. We used to call it Waire Intersign mm -hmm. those days. It used to be the darling of many of our, our students uh, to provide electronic resources and supplement the book those days when we didn't have electronic resources. But right now, with a click of a button, you're able to go to their databases and access materials uh, which are rich in all these areas that you can see covered here. Um, we have lived with white InterScience as one of the databases that are user-friendly and they are easy to access. Now, for the sake of demonstration now, I will demonstrate maybe with one or two, and I prefer to start with ProQuest. Ebook Central. Why ProQuest? As I said, it's one of the richest databases that we have access to. I want to click this one, ProQuest. And it gives us books, very rich uh, in books. It's opening. Wow. Mm. Uh huh. Okay. The site cannot be reached. Oh dear. Grace, I know you are here. Hey, I know Grace, you are here. <laughs> the site cannot be reached. Wow. Mine has opened. Oh, yours has opened. Yes. I do I don't know then what has happened to my end here. Excuse me, Brother Congo. Yes, yes, go ahead. Before we, we are struggling to open this. In the meantime, I'd like to just pose some short question. Yes. Uh, are they open? We, we, we started earlier about the open source uh, e-books and then open source e-journals. Are mm -hmm. these acceptable to our professors? For example, like those, those open source and free journals, they can be actually infiltrated by creditor publishers. Um, thank you, Molly Mothero. What happens with this Directory of Open Access Journals? They are here to protect us. Sorry. They are here to protect us from those predatory journals. So whatever is listed here, if I go to your question right, whatever is listed here, then you are sure it's not a predatory journal and you can use it for your classwork and even to publish with those journals. If I go to your question right, did I answer your question or? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. The thing is that I, I was just worried that sometimes you get those those books like that, which are free. And then mm -hmm. your lecturer, your professor can say, no, 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 they will, we, we don't accept this kind of uh, publication. <laughs> no, if you got it from this director of open access journal and director of, of, of open access uh, books, they these ones they, they they go through rigorous um evaluation for them to be accepted as part of director of books this open access journal there are features that they look at and uh, for them to register a database here then they are very sure that this database is authentic so I, maybe you would refer to us and then we explain um um how uh, the indication is done through this director of open access journal, but they are safe to use and should be accepted. All right, Thank someone you. is saying if Thank I you. refresh, it will work. Uh, let me refresh and see whether it will work. Uh, Ebook Central, why, why disappoint me? <laughs> ah, la, 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 la. Okay. Madam Grace, is yours working from your end? I hope Grace is here with us. I am just a minute. Let me confirm. Okay. But there's someone who said it's working from her end. We can it's still... Me. It opened. Okay. That's me. Um, I wouldn't mind having your page. I pull down mine and then allow you to share and no. you share the page then I move on um, I direct from your page if that's okay with you. It's on my laptop and I'm using my phone for this class. Mr. So Kumo. Yes. Let me share mine. Ah, perfect.
go ahead. I have pulled down mine and you can share your page. Dam Chris, will you navigate through or do I need to do it? Actually, I've downloaded a book. Ah, great. So you can move on there, no problem. Grace, we work together so she can move on from here and tell us how to download books from this particular database, which is very rich. Thank you, Grace. Go on. Good evening. Let me let me do we can start with a basic search can someone kindly tell me a book they're interested in or an area which one is this we are opening first it's which one uh, proquest ebook any book on statistics any book on statistics yeah okay let's let's do that <clears throat> you can see we have 129, 264 thousand book results. So it's quite general, as Euphrine had told us. Could we go to a more specific? area by doing the advanced search. Yes. Uh, let's see. Okay. Sorry. Uh, we've refined it by getting all the books that the title reads statistics. And now we have uh, 322 books. Uh, we could also filter with the years. Which, which years would you be interested in? Can we say the last three years? And you can see where mm -hmm. I am checking. Yes? Excuse me. Can you give me a book, by a statistics book by Jack Levin? Jack Levin is somebody, but Jack Levin. Uh, okay. Statistics Let me for go back. Social Research. <clears throat> Statistics, the other is Jack Levin. Jack. Yes. Can you spell the second name, please? L E V I N. E. V I N. E I N. This v, way. V, v L E V I N. V for voice. There. Yeah. Okay. You're breaking a bit. No one that I was doing. A minute. Can you yeah. hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Let's do the general one for statistics. Mm. And we had filtered to the last three years and we have gotten nine results. Uh, you can see there are various subjects uh, in business, in economics, in law, mostly business. Let me just pick one for the purposes of illustration. International Debt Statistics. It's a recent book for 2020. And you can see here that our institute has uh, unlimited access to the book. And you have... have options. You are able to read this book online. You have the option of downloading the book and you also have the option of downloading PDFs that you're interested in. 
So the, the most important thing is to come and look at the table of content. After you look at the description and see, is it uh, a book that you're interested in? Does it answer your research question? Then you can deep, far, deep dive further and look at the table of content and see if there is any topic that you would be interested in. And in that case, for example, if we chose uh, the aggregate and country tables, you can either pick the option and read the book online. You can also download the PDF to this. And when you're here, you can be able to, you are allowed to copy unlimited pages. Uh, for this particular book, each book has its own copyright restrictions. You are able to uh, add to your bookshelf. You are able to share the link to the book. You are able to get the citation to the same. You are able to highlight. Yes, Mr. Odero? I'm just lowering my hand. My hand was just ticking up there. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. So basically, you are able to do quite a bit on this. Uh, you create your own bookshelf when you come here so that you are able to save or add your items to the bookshelf so that you don't continually keep doing the same when you come to you come here. Like you can see mine is empty, but you can be able to create your own bookshelf for the various maybe units that you're doing and you are able to save your documents there. I want to go back to our book and move away from the book chapter. <clears throat> you can also be able to download the entire book. And for this particular database, uh, it requires you, uh, this one we are lucky, you can just download the PDF directly, I believe. For some, you can see this one does not have restrictions and I can be able to get my PDF directly. But I need to go back and see if I'll get a book that has restrictions. Our hands are raised. Osanya, please. Thank you. I'm stuck at a, at advanced Where? search from advanced search. Okay. Let me let, let me see. Where are you stuck? I'm here. When I go to advanced search, my screen yes. is not. It's not like your screen. Uh, what is your what is on your end? My end is bringing key and full text contains. It is the right place. Yes. You see, uh, is it showing this key and full text? Yes. So you you choose the drop down menu and you can work with the title, the series title. If you know another. For for the publisher, if you know maybe another one item to combine with, you can also choose a subject and maybe perhaps the just let's just is the subject instead of saying the ebook central subject or the BISC subject heading. So basically here you are able to narrow down or make your search more specific because you remember when we searched for statistics on its own, we got very many results. But when we chose the title, we were able to get a smaller number of results to work with. So please go to your drop down and pick either the title. If you know another, you can search with that and you will be able to get to where we are. Are we together? Yes, we are. Okay. Mr. Odero, your hand is up. I don't know why my hand is, co is continuing to be, I'm going to try to lower it, it's no. not lowering it. But anyway, okay. let me just ask a, a question. Please is it possible do. for us to get this book called Statistics for Social Research, Elementary Statistics for Social Research? Uh, we go back to the advanced search. Could you be knowing its other, please? 
there is a guy that I was talking about earlier. Uh, a very good statistics is that for actually for beginners, it's called no, Jack. We, yeah. We didn't get another. Okay. We didn't get that particular book. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Can I go on? Oh, yes. For me. <clears throat> okay. Then uh, let me pick this first one, the handbook for forensic statistics. And I wanted to see uh, if we say download the book. I want a book with the, give me a minute. Yes a book that will ask you what device you're using. And in this particular case, I'll say I'm using my own computer. It will ask you to continue. And this is the point where I want all of us to note, uh, for ProQuest eBook Central books, you will be required to get Adobe Digital Edition. Adobe Digital Edition, it is uh, freely available online and you will need this to be able to read some of the books in the ProQuest eBook Central. You realize the other book we downloaded and got the PDF directly, but that does not happen for all the books. So you will need to get this digital edition because I already have it. I will say I am done with this step and it will bring you again to this feature where you will be asked for how long do you want to borrow the book for. Please note that this particular uh, database gives you books for a specific period of time. For example, you can choose to borrow a book for a day, you can choose to borrow a book for a week, for two weeks, or a maximum of 21 days. So if you choose any of these options and you can choose either EPUB or PDF, then you download the same. After that period that you have chosen, it works the same way as the way you borrow a library book. After that period is over, you will the book will expire from your from your <coughs> sorry, the book will expire from um uh, the adobe digital edition and if you need to use it you will have to come back log again log in again and get the particular book so it's the same way that you would return a library book and borrow it again but that only happens for this particular database all the others that you'll be shown today that is not a condition for you to be able to read the books yes mr osanya Sorry, I'm back again. I'm trying it's to. Not an issue. I'm trying to get the Adobe Digital Edition on, on my machine. Yes. And I'm getting that this Adobe site doesn't match your location. Uh, please choose Africa first. Yes. Because Africa is where we are allowed to get it free of charge. So please pick Africa. Then you choose the device you're using, and you should be able to get it. If you're not able to get it during this session, please uh, side charters on library at DESTA and we'll be able to assist you in the process. Is that okay? It's okay. Me, Madam Grace. Yes. Uh, for example, the, the book you're talking about that we can down, download through the Adobe Digital Editions. Yes. Like if, for example, you borrow that book for about two weeks and then it yes. expired. Yes. Even if you if you download it in PDF and put in your folder, it will disappear from your folder. Uh, for the books that require this particular Adobe Digital Edition, you will not be able to get it. And doesn't require any action from you. But you remember the one that I picked earlier, there was one that downloaded this one, International Book statistics yeah. debt statistics yeah. one will remain with you without expiring but for this particular one it will expire from your from your adobe digital edition bookshelf after that period of time are we together okay so 
Basically, that is how to navigate eBook Central. It is a very rich database, as Mr. Kungo had, had alluded to earlier. We at least now can be able to search for it with a basic search and advanced search. Uh, just to browse the subjects, you can see, uh, this is where we did the advanced search. To browse the subject, you can see how rich it is in terms of the subject coverage. We've been told that this class is very diverse, so you can be able to look for your areas. If we have lawyers here, if we have people interested in medicine, if we have people interested in policy, it is a very rich database. But for education, even just doing a deep dive without knowing the particular area we are looking for, you can be able to see that we have over 12,064 12, books. And you can see it is in many areas of education. So even if you're just exploring, like you can see education policy, education teaching, education philosophy, theory, and social aspects. Uh, please do not let the aspect of uh, getting the Adobe Digital Edition discouraged you or the book expiring after uh, two weeks or three weeks. Please keep Ms. coming back. Miss Grace, yes. you're breaking. Yes. Can you at least adjust uh, the volume of your uh, machine so that at least we can hear you well? Okay, can you hear me now? Hello. But there's a lot of no, not even noise, but you're not audible, Sana. Okay. Sorry, maybe I can conclude by just saying it's a rich database. And I invite you to be able to walk the journey with us and exploit it further. Mr. Kumu, can I hand it back to you? Uh, thank you, thank you very much, Madam Grace. Uh, Sorry for the <laughs> No problem, no problem. This is technology, and it happens. I want to see whether I'll be able to uh, now download. I'll be able to access. Uh, let me share again. Let me share. Uh, okay, you can allow me to share. Yes. Okay, thank you, Grace, for that elaboration. Now we already know how to navigate the ebook central, and mine is still misbehaving. However, we can now go to other databases. Let me skip this one. I had to restart my machine to see whether after restarting, it will accept to show all the resources and let me see whether it has agreed now. Oh, okay. Just one minute. I okay. I had to restart everything, including my extension, uh, to see whether this one will. I don't know. Okay. Grace, is your internet in a good order now? Or not yet? Okay, let me let me see whether I'll be able to access now the ProQuest. I have restarted the whole thing. Ah, perfect. So I, I want to start from where Grace left us. She was able to help us get to the actual book. And I'm sure we were able to see how to read that particular book that we were searching and downloading the Adobe Digital. So with that, I believe you can be able to access these books from eBook Central and you create uh, your library with Adobe Digital. And one sure way to know that you have succeeded in installation of your Adobe Digital Edition software is to go to your uh, a desktop and ensure that it is there. So once you find that it is there, then you can be able to see the books that you have um, accessed that they are there, and you can see from the library. Um, 
like you can see the few books that maybe I have downloaded there before. And so we're able to see those books and you can actually open and lead them directly from Adobe Digital. Uh, I know I have done a lot of restarting for my machine to accept to be where we are right now. So maybe as a quick way, if if I searched for a book, just to for us to be in the same page, like this on psychopathology, and then maybe I search there and I get these books, so many of them, I don't want to repeat the steps that Grace was able to teach us. Then maybe I pick this one um, and I choose to read it online, the way we were taught we can read it online. You click there and you read it online. So reading online means you are not downloading it. You are just reading it as it is. So you are accessing it and reading it directly from your screen. But if can you, you can you copy and paste? Can you copy and paste? Ah, a very good question. Can you copy and paste? Yes, you can. Um, if you bring your cursor here, you can see I'm able to copy. And copying means then I use this icon here, I copy. And then once I copy, I have copied that part. And it is coming with uh, the information about it, where I got it from. So you can copy and then you say done, then you go to your Word document and you paste it there. There is something else that you can do when you're here and you're reading online. The same way if you're also reading after downloading it, you can bookmark this particular book, right? Let's say if you want this page and you'd like maybe to even highlight, like maybe this paragraph and you say, I would like to have a reference to it and I'll give it a colorade or some, some sort of a color <laughs> pinkish. Eh? So I have given it a color. <laughs> so when I'm reading, I'll be able to come back and see where maybe I color. And also I can put um, some highlight if I pick this one, pick a highlighter, and I put also a different color there. Uh, to mean maybe different things to myself. And also, if I want to bookmark that page, I just click there and it will be bookmarked. So if I go to another page, um, let me just open a new page, maybe a, a favorable page, not the table of content. Yeah, maybe even this one, acknowledgement. If I want it, so I click there, then I have bookmarked. Uh, that particular page. You can see it has the bookmark, uh, just like the way we do bookmarking when you are using the normal book. Um, then there is something else that you can do with it here, other than just the way we have done the photocopying. If you want to add a note, uh, you can write notes in it. And let's say maybe with this one, uh, this particular paragraph, I would like to... Um, add a note to it and I say that this paragraph is good for maybe introduction so I write it in introduction so when I write introduction to it that bookmark will be kept for me and if I want to refer to it in in, in future as I as I come to it a, if I bookmarked that yeah I see the one I needed to say it is for introduction should oh yeah save i save that so i have now bookmarked this particular page and i have my notes so when i come to read it maybe uh, in the future and i come to the bookmark that i bookmarked i should be able to see why i bookmarked this particular page i was good maybe for my introduction it has been marked um and i can also remove the book I can increase the font and the view, and I can decrease depending on the size of my machine. Um, you can also get citation about this book. Let's say you are told to cite this book in IPA format. So you, if you click on this particular area here, because this one will be an, um, more of a chapter, not the entire book, it will pick the chapter from where you got it from, but you are using APA 
and you're referring to that particular book. So you have that book and it shows you how to do that particular uh, citation and you can come and copy and paste. However, as you'll be seeing when we start working on um, APA 7th edition, you will see the difference because this one, when you click on it that way, and it gives you the MLA, but we are choosing APA because you are using APA, this has something that is missing in the 7th edition. And what is it? It is missing the link because 7th edition dictates that once you put in the user information, that is the author and the title and the, 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 the publisher, whereby in the 6th edition we were required to put in the place of publication, but in the 7th edition we don't need the place of publication. What is needed is the link. And how do we get the link and a stable link for that matter? When you come to this book on this right here, let me uh, bring it home. Just a little bit here, here. You can cite this book by clicking here. Oh, and also you can click here and get the link. So this one will give you the stable link to use when you are referring to this particular book. And if you want to share this book with other people and you'd like them to get a stable link, that tells you that we have stable link and unstable links. There are people who just pick the HTTP on top and they share that link. When they share that link with someone else, the other people say, we can't see that document because you didn't pick the stable URL. And therefore, for you to be sure that what you have picked is a stable URL, then you go to this particular area and you click on share this link of the book, this particular book. So once you do that, then you will be able to put the proper citation whereby we have said you'll be able to get the APA and you have an, something now to add. Well, to add, um, sorry, this is a MLA, we need to put in APA. This one. And then after you copy, then you need to put it to put the link. There is something else when we click on the site to this book that is popping up, and this one is telling us to export the citation. We will be learning in our next session on how to use uh, these citation management tools. We have so many of them. We have Ednote, we have um, we have Citavi, we have RefWords, but in this time we prefer to use Zotero. However, you can be able to, if you have Ednote with you, you can tell the system to <clears throat> export the citation to your Ednote or to the left work or to Zotero. It will do that and we'll be able to see that next week when we meet to study more on APA and reference citation tools. So much, uh, I think we have really talked about how to access and to navigate this particular book. Uh, rather using the ebook central, and we can now be able to access books. The same will happen to other databases, but why we majored on uh, ebook central, as we said, it is yeah. one of the richest databases in terms of books. And you will find most of your lecturers referring to a, to this particular database. So you need to familiarize yourself with ProQuest. So when you find a book uh, given by your lecturer and it is adding with some sort of ProQuest at the end, like here, and you find it is adding with the link uh, with a ProQuest, like this one, uh, this one, so you already know that even if you go to my loft, you will quickly be able to get that particular book in the area of ProQuest. Now, I would like to demonstrate another database, and that would be um, Josta. Josta, is, as I said, it's biased um, to some extent. Where when I'm looking for materials related to Africa, um, it, it gives me enough good, good information. So we don't struggle much, especially when you're looking for information related to Africa. Now, we can look for information, uh, and here we are looking at a journal article. Uh, we are looking for a journal article. 
maybe you can shout out something, research for and look for a journal, maybe a subject of your interest or something, a combination of keywords. Anyone with something that will like us to search? Hello, are you there? Yes, we are. Are good. Give me and 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 uh, before even I I talk about the combination of keywords. There is a key thing that Ifrin was teaching us, and I don't know whether we got it right. When you are looking for something in the internet, um, you need to be clear with the keyword. And maybe you have a topic of your research. Maybe you are researching on what? Let's say you are researching on, can you shout out something that you are researching on? A topic that you are researching on? Child, Child protection and uh, safeguarding policies. Yeah, we have we have had a phrase called child child protection, mm -hmm. child protection, and and what safeguarding safeguarding policies Safe, safeguarding safeguarding policies. No, we can choose to put it that way child protection and safeguarding. What result do we get when we report child protection and safeguarding policy? We have 9,912 results. What type of results are these? It gave us everything, including the content that we don't have access to full time. But also it gave us materials which are related to journals. Yeah, and uh, we have 4,366. We have book chapters, we have um, uh, reports, we have series, we have bookmarks, and you can see the total. But there's something that I needed before I talk about the timing to talk about here. Um, we call them the Burian searching techniques. And Burian searching techniques or searching smart techniques dictates that um, you combine the search terms, like let's say child protection and safe guarding policies. If I put just add the way I have put it as a phrase, it gives me 9,912. So what happens if I remove the small ad and I put in a cut the same ad and I search? Wow, it has not changed. Mm -hmm. So this is a good one. Majority, like when you go to other data pieces, they will change. Because this ad, when you put it in a capital letter, it means now you are combining these two terms. But I think just because it is used to us, <laughs> it's good. But some of the databases will require you to specifically use the ad in caps. Sometimes you may have um, child protection safeguarding policies. And maybe you don't get enough results of what you're looking for. You can simply come here and say child protection, maybe if it is just child protection policies, I don't know, there may be policies. And uh, sorry, I need to put it in small places, sorry. Policies, policies, like that. And then we say our, our child uh, safeguarding policies. Maybe child safeguarding. I don't know whether that is making sense for me. I had child safeguarding policies. So we are trying to say that. Um, hey, this is funny. It's giving us same, same results. Then it has reached maximum. Uh, it's not the best one to demonstrate with what I wanted to teach you on searching smart. So allow me to go to a different... Um, Area. Uh, let me use a go one, and I show you that because I don't know this one is G. I don't know. So we have. I'm not looking for picture. No, what are these? Uh -huh. I just need um, 
a Google site. Simple one. And I show you those searching techniques. Let me just bring it down. So I maybe probably come here and type child protection. Child protection. We have searched for child protection uh, policy. Just to get it there. And then we put A and D, safeguarding, safeguarding. Um, policies, like right. yeah, policies. So let's see the number of results that we get. And here we are. We get uh, how many results? We have the two thousand. Get hold of this. We have sixty-two thousand. Oh, millions. Hmm. And they are talking about safeguarding, child protection, safeguarding. Bigger screen in a way that we can all see. So that's what we got when we searched with child protection and guarding policies. And here we had put policy. Let me just put the word policies. I hope it will make a difference. Sorry. All right. So we have uh, these materials, and you record the number of outputs that we got when we put child protection policies. And maybe we also need to put and child. Maybe let me just put it again child, sorry. Make it um, even when both add. So we are looking for child protection policies and child safeguarding policies. Hoping that uh, they are. Uh, sorry, uh, Banaku, I will interrupt you a little. Uh, yes. I, I, I just wanted to let you know that um, this same link will be used by Senate at eight. Um, I would request uh, today if you, <laughs> we, you know, we haven't finished our Senate, so we are moving online. Okay. And I'm realizing that this, it has been set on the same platform that I'm using for the class. All right. So I will actually request at exactly five minutes to eight. We add there. You wind up the session for today and then we'll pick up next week. We will deal with searching techniques next time so that we maximize on searching for the information yeah next week we'll begin on time yes but today i would really request that uh on mm. five minutes to time we can uh wind up the, uh okay. so that five minutes to eight then the next session will begin a little bit earlier thank you i sent to sana Daktari for that guidance now where we were we were looking at the child protection policies and we got these articles how do you download this article? You just click on that and you can see the journal article for you to read it. I was tempted to first of all talk about searching techniques, which we will do next time. But so far, you can see you have access to this article and you can download this particular article. You can cite this particular article and you choose which style to use as you cite the article. You can see we have APA, so your work will be to copy and then you paste it in your Word document and you follow the other procedures that we'll be talking about when we meet next um, uh, Friday. In the meantime, uh, there is something I need to mention uh, here. When I was searching through those documents, there was a way that you can choose the number or rather the year of publication that you'd like to have. Maybe you want materials which are not very old, maybe from 2019 to where we are 2023. Right. So if it is um, in that, we can now see they have reduced to 1,155 materials that are quite relevant in terms of the year, the, the year of publication. So you can choose from what time to what time would you like to have that particular um, result. So in this case, now we have journal articles which we can download and be able to access. In regard to what the Dr. have said, um, today we have been able to look at the library itself, how to go about the library resources, but we were meant also to look at the 
institutional repository. I want to reserve five minutes to Grace so that she can talk to us about institutional repository. Grace, are you able to do so? We spare the five minutes for you, Grace. I move on, eh? I kindly yeah. ask we do it. We do it next week. Uh, all right. Um, mm. I know it will also be a roaded, a roaded day, but but uh, according to Dr. Ali, she said we can get another day also. So with that, then I allow us to get to ask questions. Uh, next time we will be able to deal with the institutional repository and deal with. Yes, sure, Prof. When next time, uh, you know, Professor can also be one who is teaching. No but problem. next time when we can, uh, <laughs> we, 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 if, if, if the session, we still have some few sessions, should we, we have, you know, Friday is open for thesis writing. So we, we want them to have the basics of uh, writing a good thesis in terms of APA, in terms of uh, plagiarism and the use of tannitin, in terms of, and the papers and all that. So we still, should we need to have Lori over to the following week, we will do. Right. Do I have, you have to get it right. Have... Do, do I have the five minutes, Dr. So Ali, next week, you? yes. If next week we won't wind up, we will still have another session. Okay. That, that's fine. That's fine. So we we have even um, given an overload of information. So for now, we can listen to their questions and comments. And then in five minutes to time, we give back. Please go ahead. Um, oh, good evening. Um. I have a question that um, I logged in and then my phone went off because I was on the road and then I've logged in when you are finishing. So literally, it looks like I've missed the class today. Now, my question is, is there an officer within the library that I can personally go to and um, request to take me through what you've just taken through the class today within the week? Kind yes, of, if there is any, especially in Athi River. Oh, in Athi River. If yes. you are close to Athi River, we have staff. Grace is one of them, and she's here with us. And, and we have recorded this session, yeah? We have recorded this yes. session. People can also follow it, yeah? And Dr. Adi, this is Grace. I'm also available. We can make some time next week, and I will take you through it. No issue. That's Thank okay. You. That's okay. Thank you. Those who can. Otieno. Oh, my hand is up. Oh my <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. Since yeah. you're calling me, I can just make a statement, a short statement. I think the, the people in the library are really willing to help people. The thing is that we don't go to the library. They are always asking me, where are your students? Where are these? So if you go there, there are people really willing to take you through. They are willing to take people through, whether you are here. And at Valley Road or in at the river, people are willing to take people through these things in the library. I can tell you for a fact. And thank you. You know, we have the most, we have the most um, wonderful personnel of the library, I can tell you. Very beautiful songs. And we have beautified our library and we have created Oh, you can take coffee, you can take yes. you know cardamom tea, you have mm. dispensers in our library. Uh, you did you didn't show them the, the library setup of our physical library? You should have we shown them. Show them. We will show them next, next, next week. Show them. Take them a tour through the library. Our we library. Will. It's the only library in the world. In, 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 sorry, not in the world. Sorry, in this country <laughs> that allows students to sit and relax and take coffee as they read, work in groups and have. Please take them through that. True. And we want to. Mr. Kungo. Uh, yes. Uh, could I also add that they can also book for a Zoom. They can book for a Zoom meeting. We also do yes. it online. Yes, we can do that one on one. So if you're stuck, mm. um, you're also free to do one on one, and we still do Please it. Just write to us on the email mm -hmm. given. All right. Thank well, you. Say thank you so much for them. I hope you can care for them with your um, whatever emojis. And uh, okay. literally, we are so happy. I... Um, I'm just winding up because of their coming. Uh, another meeting. Today is our days because you guys must get your results. So, <laughs> so thank you so much, librarians. You've done an amazing job. 
I'm hoping the class can now make connection. We hope to pick up next week. We don't finish the following week, but thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, Sam, thank you. Uh, your friend, thank you. Uh, Grace, thank you. And we wish you a wonderful night as we see you next week. Thank you.